apologies for the delay. Um, we just wanted through better. But um, I think the last presentation was, was excellent and it was very convenient for us as well, especially because it ended on the note of um, being an entrepreneur, innovating, doing something that's different, Gen Z, et cetera. So I think this presentation very much complements that. And just to introduce ourselves, so I'm, I'm Ari. Um, I work at Lloyd's Banking Group as an engineering lead. Uh, I've been in the, the kind of engineering, software engineering space for seven or eight years now. I also do an executive MBA at Henley Business School. And I'm just wrapping up the, the kind of final element for that, doing my dissertation. So hopefully I should be graduating soon, which is very exciting. Um, and the final thing that I'm focused on is Typer AI, which is um, an artificial intelligence backed uh, content creation tool and it's a startup. And it's something we've been working on uh, the last year or so. We're just taking it to market. Uh, we've, we've gone live in the last couple of weeks. So it's, it's very exciting for us. Uh, this is my co-founder. Do you want to introduce yourself? Of course. So hi guys, I'm Melvin. Um, as I said, um, I realized, you know, we're here with the gatekeepers today. So it's going to be very quick. Um, I'll do a very brief introduction. So I have a law background. I've done a law degree um, and transitioned into commercial banking and transitioned into tech. So um, very varied there. Um, currently working on Typer with Ari as one of the co-founders. Um, and I'd just like to say some of the presentations today have been fantastic. Uh, in particular, the presentation with the Ukraine. Um, I apply a legislative sort of scope on it. So how the UK is dealing with it. Um, the, the previous presentation before us, that was amazing. The presentation, presentation skills are amazing. They're really well done. Yeah. Um, what we'll do today is we'll take you through sort of what is AI very briefly. Um, otherwise we'll be here all day. Um, and then what is type of what we're really doing and how, what, why are we here? So what are we doing here? Um, how can we help you? Yeah, sure. So to keep things very simple, this is a very busy slide. Um, by all means, if you're interested in AI, you can digest this in your own time. <laughs> Essentially, it's, um, it's technology focused on computer science, engineering. That is a system that can analyze, uh, read, understand, interpret, act, and adapt. So typically AI has helped us uh, in recent years do things that would otherwise require human interaction. There are varying different types of AI, um, different levels of sophistication. And the three that we've, we've listed here, the more kind of common ones are reactive machines, limited memory AI, and theory of mind AI. Typer, which we haven't explained yet, but we'll get to, is reactive machines. It essentially works on input, and output. So you give it some information, you give it an instruction, and then it will act on that instruction on your behalf. Um, limited memory and theory of mind is essentially a, a more sophisticated version of that, where it stores the outputs, it stores the data, and it's able to give you smart insights on the back of that data, or it's able to, uh, as I said before, kind of learn, adapt, and think more like humans. And examples of that are things like self-driving cars. So if you drive, uh, if, if you've got a Tesla, some of you, they have uh, self-driving features. And if you, if you drive them around, it can learn from your driving activity. It can learn your routes and then drive by itself. So it's, it's implementing learning on the back of data it's, uh, it's collected. So without going into that too much, because that could be a whole conference in itself, we're here to talk to you about Typer, which is an innovative new tool. Um, and it's probably one of the, the kind of first startups that is, is kind of more focused in the academic space. Uh, and Mal is going to talk you through that. So where did the idea behind Typer begin? Um, Ari and I work in tech, tend to sort of, uh, write a lot of content, uh, create a lot of um, articles, research papers, et cetera. And um, we were looking online, you know, there's nothing there. We have to do a lot of research. A lot of time is spent on the admin side of things, right? So we realized what can we do to ease this um, and um, be in sort of He's doing an MBA. I've come from a law background. Um, we have a lot of sort of academics around us. We thought that's a very, um, really good sector for us to focus on, a really good industry. Um, Tire part is actually underpinned by um, the artificial, artificial Research Laboratory. Um, that's considered a competitor to Google's DeepMind. And it's also funded by Elon Musk, uh, Sam Altman, and Microsoft. So we're not funded by uh, Elon Musk, unfortunately but the technology that underpins us is. Um, so instead of me going for it, what we'll do is we'll show you a demo of so exactly how it works. Uh, we're gonna log in and we'll take you guys for it as well. Okay, 
Uh, this is this is the landing page for Typer. It's not an application that you can access on um, iOS or anything like that. It's just a web front end. Because we've just uh, launched, we're very much in the, the kind of validation phase. So we're looking to, this is minimal viable proposition. We're looking to get a lot of feedback. We're looking to understand the use cases in a bit more depth um, and essentially improve upon the product, which is one of the reasons why we're here. We're talking to a room full of school of academics and you know, hopefully we can get some insight from all of you uh, into how this can help with your day-to-day -day activity. So there are simply five templates here. Um, at the moment, we've got blog, essay, report, academic article, and research proposal. Um, it doesn't need to be used for these temp templates. Ultimately, it can be used for anything that involves generating content or writing. That, for now, for, for Breeze, and to just help the user with the types of things that can help with, with created templates. Um, it's quite simple. So as I said before, it's input-output. So we've had a uh, presentation today on uh, the, the Ukraine-Russia war. So if I was to give it an, in, uh, an input to say, what is the... It is user-driven, so the more information you type in as a leader, the better the quality of the content will be. Yeah. You can you can add a description. Uh, you can you can add a, a a tone of voice. We can we can go for professional, and you can put keywords. As he says, the more you put in, uh, the, the 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 better it the better it is. Um, and simply put, it it types. Um, the the content is high quality. It's plagiarism free. Um, the way it works is it reads uh, less than twenty percent, about eighteen percent of the internet, and it's it's getting the content from the internet basically does the research for you and then presents it back in a, a, a kind of coherent manner. Um, the more specific your instruction, the better the content is, and it only generates a few sentences at a time, so you're able to review the, com uh, the, the content, uh, refine it, update it, make sure it's suitable to whatever you're writing, um, and then continue to press generate again. The, the, the better your input, the smarter it gets, the, 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 the higher the quality of the, the output. Um, there are a number of use cases which we're working on. This is just one use case. Uh, we're trying to implement things that some of, um, you know, uh, not, not competitors, but others in the market are doing, such as Grammarly. Um, and I think the next thing we'll probably take you on to is the problems that we're trying to solve. I mean, look, I'll send out a link. I'll put it in the WhatsApp group so you guys can, uh, you guys can uh, test it yourself. But uh, for now, it's, uh, initially, it's free to sign up as well. So go in there and type in details. You can use it. Get two thousand word limits. Play around with it. Yeah. Right. Cool. Marvin, you want to cover off the problem as well? Perfect. So what are we actually trying to solve here? Um, so the first thing is writer's block. I understand, you know, sometimes sit in front of a laptop, type something up as a topic, but write a blog, you don't know what to do, have a cup, have a cup of tea, who knows? Uh, this inspires you, so it gives you something to work with. Um, that's one of the things. So there's productivity, um, time constraints, um, and a lit limited capacity, especially in, in sort of academia, I can imagine it's quite high. So how do we give you that time so you can spend it on somewhere where there's more value? Um, and the last one, quality of writing. As we said, we're using AI, scales the internet, 20% of the internet, and even the full amount, um, brings back um, coherent data, and it gives you, um, sort of, I guess, the, the, the usage uh, for you to input um, and then um, publish it. So it, whether it be a blog or an article or a research paper. Yeah, and um, just to show you guys, uh, some of the other templates are multi-step. So you have executive summary, introduction, main content, and conclusion for something like a report. Um, we've actually built the tool in a way where the, the outputs it's giving you for each of those sections is tailored for that specific section. So it'll write an executive summary based on the input you've given the title and the description, the same way it'll write an introduction for the second part and that the content will be introduction-like or main content-like or conclusion-like. Um, so that's, that's kind of as far as we've got it product-wise. Uh, at the moment. Um, so Marvin's covered off uh, the, the kind of problems we're trying to solve. Um, and the, the, the backlog looks interesting. Some of this stuff is quite difficult to implement because it involves a lot of R&D. Um, this technology exists in a, 
in a different capacity focused on copywriting and marketing companies and social media content creators. But in the academic world, it's fairly new. And to get it right so that people in that particular industry can use it to their benefit is difficult. It takes a lot of R&D. So short term, the things that we're work working on right now um, are things like paraphrasing. So often you'll write a paragraph because you're trying to get your point across. Um, and that point can probably be explained within a sentence or a few words. So with paraphrasing, we're looking to make set uh, paragraphs or sentences or whatever else more efficient, improve the quality of the language and the grammar. We also have a rewrite functionality. If you don't like the way something is presented that you pull together, uh, or you want to change the language or change how, how it looks, you can paste it into the tool and it will rewrite it for you. Plagiarism checker exists. It's literally just plug and play, but that's something we're going to include in the tool. And then the last two are focused on references. So we are actually building the tool in a way where when it does generate content, it will tell you the source that it's taken it from. So you can use that source and put it into a system that will organize the references for you in your chosen chosen referencing method. So if, that, if that's Harvard referencing, it will literally do your entire referencing section of your article or whatever you're pulling together in a very automated and very easy way. Because a lot of people will get small things like referencing wrong um, because it's a, it's kind of like a tedious task at the end and you just kind of want to get it done and over the line. Um, mid to long term, there's a few exciting things. One of the things we're working on is AI generated images, uh, which is basically keying in an image that you want to generate, uh, an image of uh, a laptop with a, with a techie background and it will generate an image for you it's not taking it off the internet from somewhere. It is literally generating a unique image for you on the back of that instruction. Um, we want to build out this roadmap, make sure it is tailored to this industry and make sure it actually does help and you know, does things that will improve your day-to-day you know, your, your, your -day, uh, dealings and improves productivity. So we have created a Slido link and would appreciate it you know, when you do get the time, log into Slido, enter that code and vote for which uh, feature that you know will, will make the most difference and also do let us know if there's features that we're missing off there that could really substantially help your day-to-day -day. okay um i think that's it from us yep. cool any questions do you have any kind of reaction from the academic community in any way to this because yeah i'm sort of thinking i'll get to the end of my career but anybody will you know now people can just buy this product and we've we've had we've, we've had that a lot i think what we've done is with this tool we've implemented small controls so that people can't just copy and paste and take this as like it's making my life easy so easy that i don't have to apply any kind of uh you know effort towards what i'm doing when you press generate it'll only generate a sentence at a time and it the, the reason why it does that is it wants you to interact the information there is simply for inspiration purposes. It's to give you ideas around what to write. It's to help you defeat writer's block. It's to help you get past that initial stage so you can get going and you can get some momentum. I think going forward, we can't avoid technologies like this being brought out to market. But what we are trying to do is we're trying to work with the academic community to make sure it's brought to market in the safest possible way and in a way that's productive to the lecturers and to whoever's governing it and it's productive to the students themselves right we don't want this tech to be a cheat code we want it to actually work in a positive way that helps people right because technology all around us is making life easier what would take two hours before now takes 10 minutes and this is a similar thing but how can we you know how can we work with it in a way that's actually productive and not counterproductive so